Hello everyone, this is Jason Mutlak from StellarMate. Today we'll be talking about some of the latest updates in EcosLive. So um, if you don't know about EcosLive, it's our online astrophotography platform where you can use it to control your remote observatory from anywhere at any time. You can use it to schedule uh, capture sequences, view your images, and also interact with the rest of the astrophotography community. Um, EcosLive is free. We have paid tiers if you want to uh, use uh, cloud storage or if you want to uh, uh, use our upcoming observatory rental services. You don't need the StellarMate to use um, EcosLive, though it's highly recommended to get StellarMate because it integrates really nicely with EcosLive. But uh, the only thing required for EcosLive is case stars at the end. And um, let's get started. So after you sign up, you can just log in. So I'll just log in right here. And um, in here, we added this community section, which is, uh, this is like our social-like feature added to um, our online platform. When you first log in, um, you'll be presented with this wizard to create your profile. So I'm just gonna go next. Uh, the next thing is you need to select an observatory and um, you can think of an observatory as any system that has K stars on it. So it could be your Raspberry Pi, your Salamate Pro, your mini BC somewhere. Any system that has um, K stars running is considered an observatory. So this is uh, the observatory name, the location, and so um, let me select the location from the map here. So by default, it, the location is fine, means it's an exact location. And um, by default also, your observatory is private, so it's not shared. So if I double click anywhere, the exact longitude and latitude of your observatory will be stored in the database. However, if you want to um, share your observatory but still have some uh, privacy about your exact location especially if it's not a, like a public old observatory you can toggle this off and you here you'll have this course location which is uh, i think this one is a five kilometer radius and so you can roughly um, put it where where you are and so i'm roughly in this area here and if you want to share your observatory to the rest of the world, so then you can just toggle this and now the public observatory is available. Okay, next, which uh, software, this is just uh, to help us understand. Right now we only support case stars, but we do hope to have some uh, bridge built for other astrophotography uh, software to use our platform. But right now only case stars is supported. What kind of hardware do you use? Are you a Stellarmate Pro in my observatory? What kind of imaging do you do? And so um, this has no bearing on the actual functionality. This is just to help us understand, you know, what most people prefer or, or use. All right, so that's it. So now we are in the in your profile and your profile you can see your posts uh your images and you know your achievements here you see some achievements that were uh, uh synchronized from the salamate app and in here you can select your um avatar for example so let me select one here and let me save and let me submit this and you can then go to the feed and in the feed, you can see the images submitted by, you know, other users. You can view them and you can see uh, we even have uh, AstroPen integration where, well, it's simply a link to AstroPen, the original image at AstroPen. For each image, you can see the equipment used. And the nice thing about here is once you create an observatory and you create an equipment profile, then this information is automatically filled once you upload the, the image or the post. Here are some acquisition details, and of course you have some, um, you know, social like elements, comments, likes, uh, bookmarks, and etc. Right. And by clicking this navigation, you can go and uh, you know view the other images. 
All right, so the next tab is the users and simply here you can just search for all the Ecoslive users. Um, in all the tabs, you'll see this, uh, these two buttons, which is uh, to, to use either the grid view, which is what we have by default, or the list view. And then you can use the search button to do a live search for, you know, any user. All right, so that's me. All right, so next we go to our equipment portal. And so here is where you we have curated a, a very large list of um astronomical instruments and so uh this is not complete we're still working on it but we covered uh, a large portion of the um for example cameras and mounts and etc so if you go here then you will you can drill down by manufacturer so let's go and check for example sp pony cameras and then you can see you know all the models available and if you click on a specific model you can get some metadata of, of the model. Uh, finally, we have the, probably the most important part here, the observatories. And uh, this is where you get a list of the public observatories. And um, if you see uh, this icon here, right here, uh, this is to take you to the location of this observatory. So this observatory is located here. I think this is in France. And um, so you can yeah you can explore all the users observatories these are the public observatories and um, find out where they are and uh, hopefully in in the next quarter we're going to offer up observatory rental services uh, where you can rent your observatory for free share it with others uh, or you can uh, rent it up uh, um, you know sort of like the Airbnb of astronomy okay so let me refresh this page because i don't see my observatories and there we go we have our observatory here so if you click on it you can um you can add image observatory image you can add it later uh, but the most important thing is you need to add your equipment profile so you can create different equipment profiles just like what you do in ksars but uh, this instead does not include the drivers, it just includes your physical equipment. So uh, I'm not going to add the whole equipment profile, but I'll just demonstrate here. Um, use this quick search here to find out. So I think I have EQ8 Skywatcher. That's my mount. And for my camera, I have uh, 268M. And then I'll just add my filters. So um, I have the, yeah, this Antilla three nanometer filter. And let me just quickly add the other filters. All right, so now I just add the three filters, uh, mount, camera, and uh, let's uh, let's call this a day for the observatory. Now, if you go back to your uh, feed, all right, you can then click on the button here in the corner to add a post. And so, for example, here I have a, an old image I captured of the Horse Hub Nebula. So I'm just going to click select this. The information here by default, we're going to select our default observatory. And then uh, the equipment profile is this. So it will automatically fetch everything from this. And let's add a title. You can optionally add an astro, uh, astro bin link. Horse had nebula. All right. Uh, now the last part is where you select your acquisition data. So um, you select the filter or no filters if you don't have any. So let's, for example, let's take this. Let's say 15 by 300, and let's add this. 
as to here and here you can see the total integration time and that's it. it's very easy now you click finish now just wait for a few seconds and uh, your post should be up now um uh, because i'm the admin here my post shows up immediately but uh for you uh, it has to go through moderation and then after this it will be published and if you go to the post you can see the equipment the acquisition details and so this is very very nice way to share your images with the rest of the uh, ecosystem of life community as i said we are bringing our observatory rental um, in the next quarter so hopefully before summer of 2025 we'll have it fully fledged up and this covers the community section of the ecos live website now we move to the ecos live dashboard so this is where you actually manage your observatories and um, we created an interface very similar to the stellarmate app so this is how the study map app is right now and uh the interface in ecos live is uh, is very similar to that just to make the transition easy uh between the two uh and so study Mate actually offers quite a, a bit of options uh compared to other solutions so we have the ecos live platform we have the stellar mate app for ios and android and we also have, uh, you can use uh, uh, VNC or Rust Desk to remotely actually log in to, to StellarMate, right? So, so there are multiple options to access your system. So in here, um, you have the observatory management, and this is for um, the ultimate tier. So we have Ecoslive has three tiers, it has free, basic, and it has a pro and it has ultimate. And so the ultimate is really for people with uh, uh, um, or institutions with multiple observatories and they need to manage them remotely and even offer them up for rentals for example uh, the pro tier is for almost everybody else who just wants to have some storage and some uh, um, nice features uh, like using stella um, which we're going to talk about soon all right so in this instance, uh, I'm not going to talk about everything here. Um, probably the ECOS part here is very similar to the StellarMate app. Uh, same thing about the um, targets. Um, and then what what's missing here really compared to the StellarMate app is the, you know, SkyMap integration. So here we have a nice SkyMap in the uh, uh, StellarMate app but we're missing it in the online app and we're working on that and hopefully we'll have um, um, we'll have an integration here soon for the sky map all right but let's talk about uh, Stella because Stella got um, smarter since our last release and uh, as you can see here from the prompts you can um, view some uh, sample prompts on what, what, what kind of commands you can give to Stella and here so today we'd like to give a, a live demonstration of what it can do and um, I usually use a voice prompt to talk to Stella and uh, we don't have yet um, this live interaction with Stella where, where you can talk to it like what do you, you do sometimes with uh, you know chat GPT on your mobile phone but we are planning to have this mode so we can have a, a conversation going back and forth between you and Stella in real time. Right now, we need to send a prompt and, and receive a response. All right, so let's, uh, let's test this now. Schedule the Rosette Nebula and capture 10 images. Each one is 300 seconds long at 2x2 two two binning. And we're sending the request to Stella. Let's just wait. Schedule the Rosette Nebula for observation. Capture 10 images, each with an exposure time of 300 seconds. Use 2x2 two two binning for the images. Tap or say execute to proceed. And here we get two files. So one is the schedule file, which 
we can just see the raw XML file just to inspect and make sure everything is fine. All right, so here we have the startup procedure, shutdown procedure for the observatory, all the steps to take to do the actual capture. And so this file looks fine. Now let's inspect the sequence file. And so it's 300 second images, two by two binning, and um, no filter R. Okay, I don't want to use. That. I guess it's it's so Stella would remember your last settings, and so I don't want to use R. I want to use hydrogen alpha. So what you can do, what's new in this release, is that you can hit this edit button, and um, Let's talk again and uh, add this. Please ensure the filter is hydrogen alpha. Schedule the Rosette Nebula for observation. All right, we don't need to hear that again. So let's just go check here. And so we have the filter, HA, which is actually the filter name that I use in my setup. And so it's also smart enough to figure out um, when you meet well, hydrogen alpha probably corresponds to HA in my filter setup. All right, so it looks all good now. Um, let's bring up the observatory view and let's try to execute the process. And here I will speed it this up because uh, this will take a long time because it needs to do guiding, focus, and alignment, and capture, and uh, we'll talk back after it captured the first image. And we have received our image successfully. So this was a quick demonstration of the features, some of the features at least in Equus Live Online, especially when coupled with Stella AI. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and uh, looking forward to bringing you more features in 2025. Clear skies.